G'day everyone, today I'm going to help you get better at playing the Major Nations in Hearts of Iron 4 by telling you the worst thing about each of them and helping you overcome it. Let's get into it. First up is Germany, who, especially in a historical game, has absolutely no access to rubber. The rubber that they can trade for is easily convoy raided by the Allies. And in a war where the air force and supply with trucks is so important, rubber is a vital resource. So how can you overcome this? Well, synthetic refineries are going to be your best friend, and the focus tree is going to help you out heaps as well. Refineries provide plus one rubber at the base level, as well as some fuel, which Germany also sorely needs. You can increase their output and get a 300% research boost to the technology by completing the coal liquidization and synthetic rubber focuses. This one will increase the refinery output by plus two rubber, effectively tripling the yield you get from a single factory or a single refinery. You can further increase this in the industry tab by researching the rubber processing techs, which increase rubber output by plus one at each level. To balance your resource needs versus your mill production, I like to have two lines of mills being produced and then one line of refineries. Especially as you start to produce planes and other rubber intensive equipment, your rubber production will grow alongside your demand. Just a note here as well, you can only build a maximum of three refineries in a particular state, so it's often worth queuing up your refineries all across the country and then filling in the rest of the slots with mills. One final thing you can do to help reduce your rubber needs is adjust the design of your planes. If you have the By Blood Alone DLC, you can use the plane designer to swap out components such as the self-sealing fuel tanks for things like armor plates. The stats of these two planes are really similar. The only difference is two less armor and slightly less range on the plane with two armor plates. And it halves the amount of rubber requirements for your factories when producing that kind of aircraft. Up next is the UK, whose problem is a bit of a two-parter. Firstly, they've got massive areas of territory they need to defend, from Africa all the way over to Asia. However, their manpower is so low they can struggle to do so effectively. To help with this, you can of course always change your conscription laws, but there are some other tricks that I'll show you. Firstly, the UK has a national spirit called the War to End All Wars, which reduces your overall manpower by 30%. You can remove this in the focus tree by doing the every man will do his duty focus if you go for global defense or by doing the military trading act if you go for home defense. The latter is locked behind 50% world tension so just make sure you keep an eye out for that one. Another trick that you can use is exploiting your puppets and there are a few ways to do this aside from just taking all their precious artifacts and putting them in a museum. That belongs in a museum. The first is to simply take their divisions. You just open up the diplomacy tab with a particular puppet, click on the request forces button and drag that slider to the max and they will give you control of all of their troops. If you do this in early 1939 in preparation for the start of the war, you should get around two full armies, so about 50 divisions or so. That can help you secure Africa and then later defend Asia from Japan. You can also request garrison support from your low level puppets and this is gonna put more of your manpower from your garrisons back into the available pool. In addition, don't forget to change your occupation law to something like local police force, as this provides a good level of suppression while minimizing the amount of manpower usage. Also, don't forget to change your template to cavalry. Not only that, but when you run out of your own manpower, you can use your subject's manpower to create divisions. Just go to the recruitment tab, click on this little crown icon here, and then this will show you all the subjects that you can select, as well as any exiled countries as they fall to Germany, any exiled nations that take refuge with you here will also appear. Just open one up, click on copy from one of their templates, and now you have a division template here that you can go ahead and edit. And when you train this division, it's going to pull from both yours and your puppet's manpower. You still have to provide the equipment for it, but that's not usually the issue that I have as the UK. Finally, as the UK, you need to pick your battles. There's no point trying to hold France unless you're specifically doing that in a playthrough. You can usually get away without defending most places in the world except for Africa, including the homeland if you use your navy and air force to prevent naval invasions or power drops. You know that Japan won't invade you until 1941 in Asia, so try to take out Ethiopia and then all of North Africa before this happens, using all of the colonial divisions to do so. Thirdly, we have the Soviets, and you probably saw this coming, but the biggest challenge they face is the purges. My advice for this is pretty simple though, and that's to hyper-focus on completing this part of the tree as soon as possible. You only need to complete down to the block of rights and Trotskyites to get rid of this mechanic, and you wanna do it fast to minif minimize the effect it has on your nation. A lot of these focuses have a bit of a cooldown, so once you complete it, just be sure to keep an eye on the next one to see when you can complete the next one to get it all done ASAP. Whenever the decisions pop up that'll provide negative effects to your branches or your spy agency, try to accept any that will target the Navy, Air Force, or the NKVD. And if you can, that'll reduce the penalties that you take on your army. You can also do things like forging 
uh, production reports or inspecting the Navy to frame a particular officer to help keep that paranoia down. Remember, you only have to keep it below 70% to prevent a civil war and additional purges. Once you've completed the block of rights and Trotskyites and the third Moscow trial has appeared, the political paranoia system will be disabled. It's also worth putting a spy or two in Mexico early. You can only get rid of the Trotskyite plot national spirit by completing the particular agency mission to assassinate him. Usually that would default to Mexico. For some reason in this case, Trotsky is actually hiding out in Norway. You need to complete the Behead the Snake focus to get access to this mission. However, once you do, the subtle assassination is usually always the way to go as it never misses despite it taking longer. For Japan, their biggest challenge is beating China. And it might seem easy for more experienced players, but for newer players, especially since the supply changes with no step back, this can be a real hassle. The first thing you're going to want to do is put the majority of your factories onto infantry equipment. You're basically going to be pumping out a whole field marshal group worth of your 12 width divisions and you're not doing anything fancy here you basically just need the numbers to push them back you're going to have your standard 24 width infantry on the beijing front and then you're going to mount at least two ideally three naval invasions all across the chinese coast the first one being around Qingdao. second is around shanghai and the last is here opposite sort of taiwan around fuzhou in this area Doing this is going to disperse the Chinese forces across the entire front line. Once you've done that, you need to work to try and link up all three beachheads as well as your northern advance, aiming to get any units encircled in between that you possibly can. The other thing you want to do is keep clicking these escalate war in China decisions. It's going to give you bonus attack and defense against all these countries. You want to keep doing this until the final one appears, which is called Ichigo. You only want to activate that when you're about to capitulate China, because otherwise, if you don't complete it within the 90 days or 60 days of you activating that one, you'll suffer some penalties. In terms of actually advancing, you're going to make you're going to want to make sure that you've got both supply and air supremacy. There's not a lot of supply hubs around China, so you may even have to build some and focus on building your railways. The other thing is make sure you've got fuel so your air force and navy are operating at their capacity. Even if you've got to trade quite a few sibs for some oil, it's necessary. Worst case scenario, you might have to take some of your ships off their orders. Also, if you can aim for areas where the enemies are controlling supply hubs, this is not only going to secure that supply for you, but deny it from the enemy, making it even easier for you to push. Finally, from the start of the game, you want to get your five spy agency upgrades and start putting collaboration governments in China. It's a huge nation and not only will it lower their surrender limit, but it will also give you more benefits once you do end up winning as your compliance will be higher. Set your equipment priority for operations to high in the recruitment tab to help with this. The US has one big glaring issue, and that's the 76% consumer goods that they start the game with. They may have the largest industry, but they're so busy making toasters, they just can't utilize it. Lucky for you, there's an easy enough way to get rid of a vast majority of these, and that's to get off the undisturbed isolation economy law, which hands you a big, nice, juicy shit sandwich, the centerpiece of which is 50% consumer goods. You can do this by taking the giant wakes focus in your, in your focus tree. This focus is locked behind your war support being about 30% or more, so you're going to want to send an attaché to China when their war starts. So make sure you save up your command power as the US gains that very slowly in the early years. There's also the Great Depression national spirit you need to chip away at, and that hits you with 30% consumer goods. You need to complete these three focuses here, ending with the Federal Housing Act. These require both Congress support as well as you just waiting a decent amount of time between each focus. So do them early and keep an eye out for them for when the next one's available. Don't forget to take the small lobbying effort decision and later the pay farm subsidies once you complete the agricultural adjustment focus. You can also build infrastructure or munitions factories in the states as those events appear as well. Taking each of these as they become available will give you a comfortable majority in the Congress, allowing you to complete your focuses without delay and get that industry roaring. Italy's industry is by far their biggest weakness. In terms of majors, they are a lot better than they used to be with the Buy Blood Alone DLC, but they're still one of the weakest majors in the game. To start with, there are quite a lot of focuses now which provide boosts to your industry early. That's pretty much a given. You should, however, complete the ones which give you the most sieves. So pretty much like going down the left side of this tree. The longer that your sieves are working for you, the more value they give you over, over the course of a game. You can also use your spies to put collaboration governments in Yugoslavia and maybe even Romania. Once the French have removed their guarantee, you can go ahead and complete the Balkan Ambitions focus, which will either give you the territory for free, or it'll give you a war goal to take that land by force. If you end up going to war with Yugoslavia, there's a good chance that you'll also go to war with Romania too, which will give you access not only to their resources like the oil fields, but their industry too. 
just make sure that you release Bessarabia and this little part so that way the Soviets don't end up going to war with you when they ask to annex it. Alrighty, so that's pretty much it for this video. I had to keep it relatively brief to pack everything into a decent length. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you agree with that, let me know in the comments or let me know what you think is the hardest thing about each major to play. Anyway, I hope this helped you guys out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.